So I don't know, man. We just, I don't know, Chris, we just had such a good time and I was high all the time. So I just did the best I could. <laughs> do you not do, you not, do you not remember a lot of things because you were high? I, I, I honestly think that's probably the case. I, I do remember some stuff. And when I start reading about it, I go, oh, I remember that. We did that in such a, and, it, and it'll bring stuff back. But look, I also don't know where, where my head's at. You know what I mean? I did a lot of foolish things, a lot of foolish bumps and a lot of, you know, crazy chair shots in the head, you know, a lot, a lot of crazy stuff. So who can pinpoint uh, what it is that makes me not smart like you fellers, but there's something there. That's for dang sure. <laughs> Was there a moment like where you can pinpoint where you were like, I've got to stop this. I've got to turn this around and I've got to like, like get clean, but for real this time. Yeah. Yeah. It was, uh, I didn't have a job at the time I was riding back with my brother from a, uh, a little independent show in like upper Alabama somewhere. We just drove up to the day and drove back and I'd gotten a bunch of pills from the guys there because the guys at the indie show, I'm still the road dog. I'm still a big deal. So they are going to give me everything they got and share it with me and all that. And, and I got hammered and, and I did the show and everything, but then on the ride back, I was, I was really uh, down on myself and on life and I was messed up and I was mad about it. And, and my brother, Scott had just gotten clean and uh, the company had sent him to rehab and paid for it. He said, you know, you can call Ann Russo. Ann Russo at the time was the, in charge of the wellness policy programs. And so I called her the next day and, uh, and <clears throat> I don't know that at that moment I was ready to quit doing drugs and drinking alcohol because I, mm. I just was trying to like do something, just do anything. And I didn't know what else to do. And I knew. And so I said, yeah, I called her. She set me, set me right up. Uh, by the 28th day though, I was, ready to stop living that way. You know what I mean? And I had been wanting to stop living that way for a while. I didn't know how to get off the roller coaster. Um, and I didn't care for a while there. This is the dark part of the, of the uh, sweet Chrissy V show. Um, I didn't care which handful of pills killed me either. You know what I mean? And the only problem in my mind at that point was, oh, my kids are going to find me dead. You know what I mean? It was, I had got to that point, but whatever it was, my kids are going to find me. My wife's going to find me. whatever it was, kept me from doing it. And then I got, you know, and then, and then that's where I was when Scotty said, you can go to rehab. Um, yeah, man. And I'm I thank God and heaven above today that I went that time because I was, I just went for 28 days. You know, if you're ready to quit living like that, you'll take suggestions and you'll, you'll quit living like that, but you have to be ready. Like yeah. no place is going to get you there. No, no other human's going to get you there. You know what I mean? You, you got to get you there. And until you're ready, you're not going to, you're not going to try to change, you know? Yeah. I've heard a lot of people say that, like, you can't have someone else sign you into rehab. Like, unless you're ready yourself, then oh, nothing's yeah. changing. And that, look, that's just the legalities parts about it, Chris, like the legally signing in. I I'm talking about the actual work and, and the actual digging in deep to uh, look inward and see why am I, because mine was all fear-based. My whole deal, and it's crazy to say that people just go, you went out in front of 20,000 people and cut promos and wrestled and blah, blah, blah. And I'm like, I was terrified. I was, and I got high because of it. And then the second run, this, this last run about eight years ago, so much better. Like, I wish I would have had the youth of my body that I had the wisdom of my mind at that time. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like it would have been great and I'd still be doing it probably. Um, but yeah, when I was ready to quit living like that, man. And so I, I continue to this day to, uh, to look inward and, and, and try not to blame things, you know, life happens and it happens to us all. The, it rains on the righteous and the unrighteous, you know what I mean? So it happens to us all. It's not what happens in life that counts. It's what I do in response to it. And so, that's empowering. You know what I mean? It's also yeah. liberating from like, it's almost like re, if I lifted weights, it would be like re-racking the weights at a squat rack and you go, oh God, I'm not in control of anything. I don't have to be in charge of anything. I just have to control me. It turns out that's a full-time job, <laughs> but it's a job worth fighting for. You know what I yeah. mean? That's where I'm at right now. I mean, and congratulations. Like it's, it's a big step to be able to go, that was who I was and here's who I am now. Yeah. And, and I'm sad to say that's who I was because it's, I say this all the time. It's that's not who my mom and dad raised. You know what I mean? That was not the guy uh, with the uh, moral values and the convictions that 
that they taught me. That was somebody else. And I don't like that guy. And I want to drag that guy out in the street, and beat the crap out of him. But then I realize, <laughs> oh, it's me. I can't do that. So how do I work on me today? You know? Yeah. 